thing is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a double A fuel dragster cloaked inside some sheet metal. <laughs> This is a strong 409. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week we're in McKinney, Texas, to visit Pat Loeb and check out a few of his cars. Now, Pat's got a really eclectic collection, and if there was any theme, I would say it was things that go fast. He's got a couple Ferraris, a Pantera, but what he's really into is 60s drag cars. So I asked him, could I pull out a couple of your legendary lightweights? He said, yeah. I said, yay. So let's do this thing. Hey, Pat, good to finally meet you. I've heard about your cars and you for some time now. <laughs> Thank you. You're very kind to say so. <laughs> well, you've got, you have interesting tastes. You like some Italian cars. You've got your pasta garage. My pasta garage. <laughs> pasta garage. A couple right. Ferraris and a, and a Pantera, Pantera, which is, of course, Italian, powered by Ford. That's right. But you got you really like 60s muscle and drag muscle. Yes. Because you yes. were doing that back in the day. That, that's what I did back in the 60s, right out of high school and when I was going to college and, and worked at a Chevrolet dealership. and. And it really gets into your blood. Yeah, and well, hence the three 409s here, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's what you were running back in the that's day. That's exactly right. I raced 409s. But you've got some very special 409s. The fuel injected, which you kind of created. Yes. The 409 they never yes. made, right? Correct. Correct. But then this one is another car that Chevy never really made? That's correct. What they did. As a car. As a car. They never built this car. What they did was back in that day of, in the 60s, it was win the drag races on Sunday and sell, sell cars on Monday. Monday. You got to sell them on Monday. So what Chevrolet wanted to do was to win one big race. So uh, from the first of the year all the way through the end of the summer, Chevrolet started building very special one-off parts. And they would send them out to the drag racers of the Not day. complete cars, Not just complete, the pieces. Just the pieces. The bits. And the parts weren't available to everybody. They built these special parts that have been that I've collected to put on this car right here. So this is a this is a lightweight Bel Air basically now, right? Correct. With aluminum front end. Correct. This car, the Bel Air, was the choice of drag racers. It was the choice of drag racers. Some chose the, the Biscayne, but the majority of them were the Bel Air. I mean, the Bel Air with the bubble, with the bubble top, top is what it was called. Huh? And were they a little bit lighter? They were a little bit lighter. So that, that was probably and it's probably because of all the other components that were deleted, like radios. And, so radio delete, and heater, there, heater, heater delete. delete. Uh, clock, clock there's no clock there. Right, and uh, but it does have seat belts. You know oh. that was a that was an ad an ad option. You built it. I mean, you created this. So what did it start life as? Just a just a regular Bel Air. It started life as a regular Bel Air uh, out of the Los Angeles area, but without the lightweight front end oh. parts no, uh, nor the special engine components. It's just an absolutely gorgeous restoration. But let's let's go up and see what's under that aluminum hood. Let's do it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> now, now that is a very interesting look. I mean, first of all, you got, you know, the, the aluminum hood, which looks wild enough. But these inner fender wells look very odd. Wow. And, and that they are. The only thing we can determine that, and, and 62 was the only year Chevrolet built these. That's how it looked. That's exactly That's how, how it, it came. <laughs> Even the drag racers of the day, when they received these parts, they came in a big crate. Uh, but they took them and looked at them and said, what in the world have they shipped? <laughs> so, <laughs> what was this mistake? What, exactly. Because <laughs> you can see where, they're even, where, the, where they cracked and they were like re-welded. They, flex? yeah, they yeah. flexed. They did. And the, and the big issue is these, this is like a 26 gauge aluminum. It's really, really thin. I think what they did when they, when they stamped these, they put the sheet of aluminum in and stamped it in the dies. And the dies were the same dies they used for the steel. They dialed down some of the pressure, and when they came out, they looked like this. They were all wadded up. Listen, interesting so, looking uh, intake. Well, the, most most of the intakes, most Chevrolets that are built, all have a one piece intake manifold. Uh -huh. And what's rare about this is it has a, an actual two piece intake, yeah, a valley a cover here, and then the intake sits here, and it's a high rise, and it and it gets the uh, the gasoline up further away from the engine and helps the air to flow underneath it, and it cools the fuel. Was this a specially built up engine? For racing or? For in, in 62 it was because they had special camshafts, special pistons, they were 13 and a half to one compression. Wow. Um, uh, special high lift cam, et cetera, and uh, push rod guide plates and all kinds of special things that were built inside the engine at the time. And that's how this one's? That's exactly how this one is equipped. <laughs> so, you know, uh, 13 and a half to one compression, 400 some odd horsepower. 
single master cylinder, <laughs> no no power boost. No, uh, yeah, the power is your right <laughs> leg or your left leg, whatever you can do to get there. <laughs> oh man, you've done this up absolutely right. As you know, the the lightweight 409 of the day, and this is something you you can drive and it's streetable and. Yes, yeah. it is. As a matter of fact, we we drive it and I enjoy driving it and running around S in it. Street and, and strip. Street. Can I drive it and enjoy running around? I in think it? that's a great idea. I, I do too. I'd be wonderful. <laughs> let's, let's close this baby up and take that out. <laughs> let's do that. Here we go. All right. That engine just sounds so strong. With 13 and a half to one compression, it, it, it gives that feel, and it's a good, solid feel. It's so pretty and everything, but it feels like a drag car. Well, it, just it the was, way you sit in it and everything. It's the, just... the actual, this actual car was a drag car out of California. Wow. Can I give it just a little gas? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It just, you know, uh, instant. It's instant. There's a Texas car right there now. <laughs> <laughs> Get a shot of that. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Power steering takes all the power you have to steer it. <laughs> it right. yeah. But it's not bad actually. No, for, it really... for as much engine as up there, I would expect it to be a lot worse. This is a strong 409. Uh, thank you. With that Mopar. That well, Mopar, yeah, that Mopar <laughs> sitting back there with the 426 Hemi. <laughs> I'm thinking we should go back and take that baby out. Well, but they're both about 400 horsepower, aren't they? <laughs> well, let's just see what that 400's like. What do you say? Uh, okay. <laughs> Great idea. Pat, I love that Bel Air. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, well, thank you, Dennis. What, and what a sound that, that 409 has. It's just, it's, it's yeah. a special sounding car. It is very special, very deep throated. Well, now here's another really special car. Yes, and it is. It's special in a lot of ways because not only is it the 1966 AHRA world record holder. Yes. You actually came up against this car back in the day, right? What's the old story? If you can't beat them, buy them. Buy them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I raced, there was one car that was always there that was a nemesis for everybody. And little did I know that one day I it would end up in my driveway. <laughs> but this was it because this car could outrun anybody at any time. So these things were terrors. They were terrors because the Chrysler engineers took these cars and said, I'm going to do something unique and different. So Chrysler said, I got an idea. Let's just acid dip this whole puppy. And that's what they did. And the whole thing is, is, is paper thin. But the engineers of the day, they took it to the next level by, by deleting everything you could possibly think of from here all the way back once they lightened the front end of the car. For instance, it's got one single right. uh, windshield wiper. You know, the, the transmission does not have a uh, a park uh, pole in it. God forbid you have a coat hook, so they deleted coat <laughs> they're hooks. They're gone. Along with radios and heaters and everything else. Well, I love that. A, tender fender. They are very tender. But it's a steel car. It it's, is a steel car, and I forgot the exact weight, but it's something like 3,300 pounds. But they did, they, they pulled everything out of them. Of course, you know, obviously no back seat. Correct. And then these are and van seats, right? These were right out of a Dodge van. The seats do not adjust. You either you either you put wooden you. blocks on the pedals or it fits you or it doesn't. That's it. That's it. One way or not. Well, and you can feel. I mean, you can even feel the door. The door is really light. It is very light, very sound. And then it's a midnight blue. Is yes, it a factory it, color? It's a factory color. I love the, the yellow striping because otherwise this would be a lot of dark blue. It'd be a lot of blue. These stripes really make the thing look. It made it, made it jump is, yeah, what, it is really, what it does to get away from the big slab. And these were the but stock tail lights from? Stock tail lights, stock bumpers. The uh, car was sold originally new at Grand Spalding Dodge in <laughs> Chicago. The legendary Grand Spalding Dodge. <laughs> right. Man. Something unique about the car that a lot of people don't know is that it came with from the factory uh, with an altered wheelbase. They altered the wheelbase forward two inches 
in the stock wheel well. Uh -huh. The little hiccup came when they went to put slicks on it after they built the first one, and they discovered that the slicks hit the front leading edge of this quarter panel. So the engineer said, we've got a fix for this. Give me that hammer over there. And they just... And they took a hammer and they literally beat the, beat the panel in, the quarter panel in right here, far enough for the slicks to, to clear. So that's what it's supposed to feel that like. That is exactly it? what I mean, it's supposed to feel like. that's clearly been beat with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> right. But that's more the reason why the cars were so quick back then because of the weight transfer or moving the rear axle forward two inches would move this body. You can imagine how much metal mass goes back yeah. behind the rear axle. By, and by you just inches. wanted to you want to, launch. You want to throw all that back. Whoa. And when it launches, it, it pulls the wheels about like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what, uh, what makes it do that. Okay, let's do that. Now that's an engine. That's, that's an engine. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. So 426, dual quad, and that's that, that's that interesting intake manifold too. Yes, it is. And as part of the lightning process for this engine, the uh, intake manifold is made out of magnesium. Wow, really? As opposed to a cast iron or a cast uh -huh. aluminum. And uh, you can't tell it, but the water pump is aluminum as well. So they did everything they could to lighten it. So they could, they, it was sheet metal that was banned Correct. In aluminum, but you could do... You could do everything else that you could possibly think of. Steering gearbox that is looks, aluminum. That's amazing. When you consider all the other pieces that they could possibly make out of aluminum, I can, can't imagine why they would pick a, a, a steering gearbox. But the weight of a cast gearbox would be substantial. Yeah, it would. It would. It's got a lot of unique one-off little things. Little stuff like the firewall resistor is, is special for just the, the 426 Hemi car and the radiator is a special uh, wide radiator for it. So they would pick and choose certain things that they knew they needed for performance and for uh, weight reduction. And then uh, again, north of 400 horsepower? Great point, 425 is what they advertised it, but, and I've not dynoed this one, I, I, I need to do it, but I've heard that some of them will run up 700 plus. <laughs> so I just, it boggles the mind. It boggles the mind, I don't know what, what it takes to do that. Now this is another one that, I mean, this baby runs and... This baby runs. Not not exactly a uh, grocery getter, but what no. do you say we take this one out too? I think that's a great can idea. I, I mean, this thing would just be a blast. I can drive it? <laughs> Let's go. All right. Ready for takeoff? Ready for takeoff. <laughs> Bet this is gonna be pretty raucous. Here we go. Well, I think makes nice. a lot of racket right off the bat, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this thing is more raw. I can tell that right off the bat. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna have a little different experience. A little different experience. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you put that. <laughs> wow. I hope we have enough gas. It's only got a full tank. <laughs> This is serious stuff. This, this, this is serious stuff. It's only 425 horsepower. Is that all right? Wink, wink. <laughs> I always thought these Mopars looked particularly menacing, too. I think they're they're a mean-looking car. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. They, they're stands. Uh-huh. And that's the headers we're, we're That's hearing. the headers hitting against the floorboard. When, when the headers are open, you never hear that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you may feel it's it. It's not that they don't hit the floorboard, it's just right. you don't hear it. <laughs> right. Well, this is what it sounds like with the headers on cork. This is the real deal. Now that's some par. But it's amazing they took a Dodge Coronet and turned it into this. You know, the family grocery getter car. Yeah. And they and they, they stuffed this into then they, you know they did it with the barracudas and they did it with all the darts and stuff like that. It's amazing what they were able to pull off. Well and that really, I mean that's the whole story of the muscle car, really. It was just throw a big engine in a grocery getter sedan. That's exactly right. This is not 
much of a boulevard cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, it's lacking something. <laughs> it's, I haven't put my finger on it yet, but I, I keep trying. I think it's a it's, quarter mile of straight that's block right. top. I think that's what it's running. Right. Straight pavement. That's what it miles. likes. So until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics and drag cars. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring.